good morning, good morning. Up early today. Uh, gonna be on the road for about 40 minutes. Gonna get a good run in to start today, so. The best music is the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. A little bit of Kendrick, J. Cole. Those guys are, you know, Chris Brown's pretty good. You know. It's a lot of good music nowadays. Orleans, you know, Eagles, Temptations, Stevie Wonder, Elton John. I love my family and friends, but when it's time to train and time to focus, it's like I'm isolated in this place, you know, I'm living with the coach, um, Kevin and his wife and the other fighters, and everything we do is boxing. Train, eat and sleep, boxing. So uh, that's, what, that's what I love about Vegas. When I tell people I'm training in Vegas, you know, everyone thinks partying, bright lights, busy place, but the matter of the fact is that we stay in a place where it's like a family environment. So we're far away from the temptations, and uh, like I said, all we do is focus, you know, focus on what we have to do, which is train hard, rest well, eat well, prepare yourself for a, a great night and fight night. that um, you need a crystal ball to have the answer to that fight. No one really knows. We all thought the first fight that uh, the Wilder's power would be too much, but Fury, I think, won the fight on points. There was no doubt about it. This time around, I think it'll come down to which guy makes the adjustment the best. Yeah. Both guys will know each other a lot better. Wilder knows that he could have performed so much better. He was reckless in the first fight. I, I think, think he, needs, he, needs, to, yeah, he yeah. needs to set that power up relax a little more, he needs to punch when Tyson punches and not let Tyson, you know, get him with the herky-jerky all day, all night long. Yeah. So it'll come down to who actually makes that adjustment. So who are you going for? <laughs> so who are you picking? I sound like a politician, right? <laughs> it's like you're avoiding the question. Yeah, I know. I, I, I really think, uh, I think Tyson will be doing very well to stay away from Wilder's power for 12 rounds. Yeah. Where's it hurting today? The horses. Uh, still feel it. You know, this side. That's why I feel. I feel like it's in the, yeah. it goes extremely, extremely fast in a vibration mode to do two things: relieve pain and draw blood flow to the area so that it heals better. Um, it does that with this device that goes super fast. We're going to do 3,000 hits towards his trapezius. Then we're going to come back down here on his lower trapezius and hit that as well. Um, so, and it's typical, typical scenario. He's clenching when he's when he's boxing and he's sparring and stuff. He's throwing, and these muscles get a lot of work um, that most people don't even think about. But you'll see a color change in his skin. This is vibrating so fast that. It's just automatically drawing blood to this area. Why I'm pushing it is to drive that blood flow in deep to the tissue. No drugs, no medication, nothing. This is pure, just deep tissue massage for the machine. Right. Right up here. This little ball you had here broke that one up. Yeah, it was like a yeah. bump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem, buddy. Right. Guys like you that train hard, like you do, you know, constant trauma, you get a little, little bleeding in the muscle, and that can sometimes get a calcification. Uh, in your case, what you had today with those 
those muscles are tight in certain areas. And that's what we call trigger points. Yeah. You know, you guys, you guys know about trigger points. So that's the area we just we just have to overwhelm the muscle so so it relaxes. The muscle is trying to protect you. It's tightening up there. It's right. Muscle. So we're doing the same. Hey, you can relax and we just push it so the muscle just finally goes whoosh and it gives and then you feel it. Yeah. So this is my room. As you can see, it's very tidy. Um, you know, in my spare time when I'm not training, we're not watching fights and we're not uh, discussing about boxing. Um, I love to just come in the room and relax and, and play a bit of um, the piano, just to take my mind off everything else that's been happening and, and throughout the day. And uh, my sister plays the piano. I play the guitar, my brother plays the drums, and we just sort of, um, you know, taught each other. And so I just, uh, yeah, I'm just here, gonna have a little jam and sort of mess about and see what I can uh, come up with. So this is the gym that we uh, we train at, Team Barry Gym. So we get all the work done, you know, bag work, we in the ring doing sparring, doing pads. And it's a, um, it's a clean gym. You know, and a clean gym is a, is a gym where you want to be at and you want to, you know, you want to train. And uh, in this gym, we have a lot of, you know, posters all around from the different fights that we've had throughout our career. And some, uh, you know, some of the meaningful fights that we've had is, uh, you know, one with Takum. I think that's the fight where we won and we became the mandatory. Was it the... Yeah, we became the IBF mandatory to fight Joshua. And obviously here's Ruiz. 2016, we won the World Championship in New Zealand. And uh, as you can see here, there's White, Dillian White, there's Anthony Joshua. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there's, there's pictures everywhere. So I think you can, uh, when you walk into the gym, obviously, you see that there's all the equipment here that you would um, use to work out, but then you see all the, you know, the the different fights that we've had, and when you see the, um, you know, the posters, and you, you it sort of bring back brings back memories of what you've achieved, and then it sort of just, uh, you know, some of these fights I want to fight them again, you know. Example, there's always there's the Ruiz fight which uh, we won, but the, the White fight was a very close fight, and when I see that. It just makes me want to fight him again. You know, when I see Joshua up here, it makes me, makes me want to fight him again. And, um, you know, I want to fight them. Hopefully they want to fight me and uh, we can get on again some, at some stage. Look at you. You're running in circles, which way will you turn? Look at you. You know, boxing is one of the things where you have, when you punch, you have to be, you can't be tight. So with the strength and conditioning that we do, the boxing, the running, 
you know, I think it's important to stay um, just a little loose and relaxed and elusive. So when the punches come, <clears throat> like finally after seven years, I've uh, mastered the splits. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> That'll be, that'll be the day, right? Isn't it? Push away. Don't lean. Don't lean. Okay, that. I remember the spider bite? My whole body was just... Oh we God. didn't know what was happening. But after training yeah. and I was stretching, nothing, like just little movements was painful. Ah, ah. So, and she's like, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. I left that. Just sort of left. Battle scars. I think it was the fourth or fifth week. Yeah. I just looked like I was not there. I looked like, you know, pale, just like miserable. I, I didn't think I was miserable. I just thought my body's tired. So I left New Zealand and there was a, there was a hole in my leg. And I looked down and I was like, I don't know what that is, probably heal up soon. And then, remember we saw it during camp? And then uh, obviously at the fourth week, the body just declined real bad. And I went from sparring eight to 10 rounds to not even being able to complete two rounds of sparring, which is, you know, that's a bad sign. Mm -hmm. But, psst, Dude. Psst, there's nothing there. <laughs> when it was announced it was a spider bite, a lot of people, questioned it and, and said we were lying and I'm pulling out of the fight because I don't want any smoke from Chisora and but uh the truth is I wanted to fight and I wanted to um when I found out it was a spider bite I, I I you know Kevin and myself please doc is there anything that we can do to fight the doctor said sorry you're not you know you're not fit to train which means you're not fit to fight so he pulled us out of the fight and we have medical records and everything showing that it's the truth but people can think whatever they want to think as long as we know the truth and as long as we made the right move at the right time because uh, boxing again is not a game uh, you, you know we go in there to work for our families but also our lives on on the line one wrong move can be taken away from you so you have to be smart 29th of february is a day that i'm going to be fighting and can't wait for that but if i got the opportunity again to you know to to fight your sorrow, i'll take it in a heartbeat I, I, I believe he's a good fighter who's been around for a long time, experienced, and he's done some great things in the ring, and he's sort of revived his career with some good wins, and I want some of that action. That's it for today. I'll see you guys in Dallas.